On May 11, 2022, Israeli forces killed Shirin Abu Akleh, a veteran Al Jazeera journalist and a Palestinian American. But Israel didn't see Shirin's death as a human rights issue. It saw it as a PR problem. And so the disinformation started. But eyewitness accounts and video analysis all point to Israeli gunfire. Here's what we know happened. Shirin was covering an Israeli raid in Jenin, a city in the north of the occupied West Bank. She was wearing a helmet and a flak jacket, which clearly identified her as press. Shirin was shot behind her ear, underneath the helmet, killed by Israeli fire. Journalist Shada Hanaisha was standing right next to Shirin when she was shot. And it isn't just one eyewitness account. There were multiple people who all said the same thing. But it didn't matter what eyewitnesses said. Israel's goal was to deny responsibility and create confusion. And it did so deliberately by blaming Palestinians. A few hours after the shooting, Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett tweeted out this video, <laughs> saying that Palestinians were firing indiscriminately and falsely suggested that Palestinians were responsible for Shirin's death. And that suggestion then led to many mainstream media outlets creating headlines like these. This isn't just coincidence. The Israeli government knows how to use its statements to manipulate mainstream media. An official even took credit for their, quote, PR blitz, saying they had successfully influenced the Associated Press and BBC's coverage to cast doubt over who had killed Shirin. But here's the thing. According to witnesses at the location where Shirin was shot, <laughs> Ali Samoudi is another journalist who was shot at the scene. His eyewitness testimony immediately debunked Israel's claims. But the most damning rebuttal came from Beit Selim, a leading Israeli human rights organization. Beit Selim researchers actually analyzed the video shared by the Israeli government. They went and refilmed the location to show that the Palestinians in this video were not responsible for Shirin's death because there was virtually no way their bullets could have reached her. I think it's worth pointing out that this uh, propaganda line was propagated by no less than the Israeli Prime Minister, Foreign Minister, Defense Minister, other ministers, and the IDF spokesperson. It was only after Beit Selim's video that anyone in the Israeli government walked back the claim blaming Palestinians for Shirin's death. Israel's army chief then issued a statement saying we cannot determine by whose fire she was harmed. But the disinformation had already gone out. And the end goal was still to confuse and create more headlines like this. Israel demanded a joint investigation with the Palestinians, which the Palestinian Authority denied. <laughs> But Israel continues to shift blame towards Palestinians. Israel's military occupation kills hundreds of Palestinians every year. Last year, they killed 313 Palestinians. 71 of whom were minors. Most of them don't get the coverage Shirin's killing has received. But since Shirin was a prominent international journalist, the widespread outrage has forced Israel's biggest ally, the United States, to chime in. Still, the State Department was careful to not condemn Israel, even though Shirin was a US citizen. Israel has the wherewithal and the capability to conduct a thorough, comprehensive investigation. They've done it before, and we expect they'll do so in this case. Israel's military now says it's considering the possibility that an Israeli soldier shot Shirin. But here's the problem. Israel investigating itself typically never leads to any meaningful measures of accountability. 
Like in 2014, when an Israeli airstrike killed four children on a beach in Gaza. Israel said it was targeting a Hamas compound, but eyewitnesses said it was just a hut the kids were using to play hide-and-seek. After investigating itself, Israel determined that it was an accident and exonerated itself from any wrongdoing. Then there's the example of how Israeli forces killed a 78-year-old Palestinian-American man just earlier this year. Omar Assad was gagged and handcuffed by Israeli soldiers during a raid in the middle of the night. He died from a stress-induced heart attack caused by his injuries while he was detained. They were hitting him, pulling him out of the car, dragging him a couple of hundred, two, three hundred meters. They left him dead and they walked away from there. So what was the punishment for causing a 78-year-old's death? The commanders of the platoon that conducted the raid were removed from their position and won't be allowed to serve as commanders for two years. No jail time, no external investigation, no justice for the victim's family. As some of you know, I'm Palestinian-American, and I've reported from the occupied West Bank for AJ+. I've seen firsthand how Israeli forces target journalists, especially journalists who are Palestinian. We don't, I don't speak Hebrew, we're, I'm an American Okay, okay. They are violent, aggressive, and show little regard for the freedom of press. There's a clear, systematic pattern here. In recent years, Israel has increased its attacks on members of the media with virtual impunity. Just one year ago, Israel bombed and flattened the offices of Al Jazeera and the Associated Press in Gaza, alleging that Hamas had used the building to fire rockets. Israel never provided Al Jazeera or the AP any evidence for its claim. Both news organizations denied the presence of any Hamas members in the building. And even when journalists have worn clearly marked protective gear saying press, Israeli forces have shot and killed them anyway, just like they did with Ahmed Abu Hussein and Yasser Murtaja in Gaza in 2018, and just like they did with Shirin in the occupied West Bank in 2022. This story is quite personal because I knew Shirin as a colleague and a friend. For years, I had watched her trailblazing reporting across the occupied Palestinian territories and looked up to her as a role model. I met Shireen in 2010 at the beginning of my career at Al Jazeera and was excited to get to know the woman who had long inspired me and countless others to become journalists. Shireen was kind, loving, humble, and fierce, and she'll be remembered as a brilliant, intrepid journalist who was the voice of the Palestinian people and their struggle for freedom. She put her life on the line for over 20 years to tell their stories, and her death is a devastating loss. Shirin touched so many of us in person, but also by her inspiring example. And the best way in which we can honor her courageous legacy is to redouble our own commitment to report the truth and the reality of life under Israeli occupation.